Next Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, begins a new liturgical year. Today, we are blessed to be able to gather for the sacrament of baptism as well. This is the first baptism we've done under COVID restrictions. So if something looks a little different, um, just go with the flow. Also, the, the hope is at all times in church, we will be at least six feet apart, and we're working on that um, during the baptism. And, um, and um, just remember that throughout our worship. We're blessed to be able to worship at this time. The whole service is in your service bulletin. And I also call your attention to the fact of those who are here in church that our worshiping community extends beyond the church. We have members of the church and others who are joining us via live stream. So please keep them in your prayers as I hope that they will keep us in their prayers as we worship together. Um, one thing to note is that this is being live streamed. So as a prelude is being played, the prelude goes out um, through the airwaves or whatever they are today. But also our voices go out if we're talking to one another during the prelude. So once I finish the announcements and the prelude starts, our worship has begun. And please, um, please um, allow the joyful noise of the organ to lead us at this time. Once again, welcome.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of this earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Ezekiel, chapter 34. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the stray and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set them up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Amen. Let us read Psalm 95 responsibly by half verse. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. For the Lord is a great God. In his hands are the caverns of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. A reading from Paul's letter to Ephesians, chapter 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above the rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all, all in us. The word of the Lord. Amen.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit, sit on a throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And he will say to those, at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or strange or naked or sick or in prison and did not care for you. Then you will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Perhaps you have felt or heard people say something like, I am so done with 2020, I'm ready for 2020 to be over. Well, I've got news for you. Today is the last day of the church year, of the church liturgical year. Next week, first Advent, is the first week of a new year. I also have more news for you. COVID is still here and we must endure it. And also, as we look at this time period, Thanksgiving falls in between the end of one year and the beginning of another. There is much to be thankful for during this past year. As we look at the exclamation point of Christ being King of King and Lord of Lords, and we look forward to welcoming the newborn Christ child, we hear in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus saying, if you haven't gotten it yet, here's what we mean by the kingdom of heaven. And I don't know about you, but when I listen to those words, there's a little sheep and a little goat in me, and I suspect there is in all of us. But the good news is that Jesus made that point with triple exclamations, so that if we have any question, we know how to embrace and proclaim and serve in the kingdom of heaven. We also know that that's the end of the teaching of Jesus and that Jesus' death and resurrection helps fill the gap and is part of the story, the central part of the story. Today we will baptize the newest member of our church community 
we will have the chance to say our baptismal covenant and we will learn anew that our lives are set apart for Christ. We will fall short, but we will cling fast to the grace and promise of Jesus Christ who intercedes for us. So there is more to the story than the gospel, but the gospel reading today makes it ultimately clear in a way that cannot be avoided what it means to serve in the kingdom of heaven. Today is also Thanksgiving Sunday, that day when, as is our custom, we submit our pledge cards as, as outward and visible signs of our commitment to being servants of the kingdom of heaven and in this specific parish as we give our of our resources, our time and talent in thanksgiving, thankful response for all that Christ has given us. The water from the baptismal font will be removed following the baptism, and we will continue our custom of placing our pledge cards in the font, symbolically making the connection between our promise to serve Christ and our tangible gifts to continue that life and ministry. I now invite Ryan Hagels forward. Ryan is our organist and music director. Ryan has been with us about two years. And when we brought Ryan here, we knew that he would do wonderful things for us in supporting our ministry in the area of music. What we did not know is some of the gifts he has around live streaming and helping support our parish during these last months as we have figured out how to be a church in the midst of COVID-19. Ryan, please come forward and thank you for, for sharing a few words and thanks for all that you do. Since you're since you're in the pulpit, I'll sit at the piano bench. So. <laughs> I love it. All right. Good morning. Good morning. First, I would like to say a very big thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak. As you all know, it's very rare for me to be on this side of the sanctuary during the service in full view. Usually I'm hidden away upstairs in the loft. I thought I would start off by explaining how I arrived at St. John's. One of my closest friends, whom I, I knew as Leanne Faust uh, when we were students, is the choral director at the Fayetteville Academy. In the spring of 2018, she was staging a production of a musical, uh, The School of Rock, and at the last minute needed to replace the pianist for the show. It just so happened that my schedule was open, so I drove up from Florida and arrived about one hour before the first band rehearsal. I spent a week in Fayetteville and very much enjoyed my time here. I also met Dr. Michael Martin, the choral director at Methodist University. His son, David, was playing the lead in the production. During that week, I also coached Leanne's students, and Michael happened to show up and see me as I was working with one of them. A couple months later, he contacted me, letting me know there was a vacancy at the university and invited me for an interview. I was very interested. At the time, I was living in Florida, a place I had no intention of ever living. It's too hot, too humid, and too flat. Although I must admit I loved visiting the beaches and I love all things Disney. I had already placed applications at other music programs and very much was hoping to live somewhere in the mountains. In fact, I was offered a job in Colorado Springs, the place where I was born, but ultimately I turned it down due to the incredibly high cost of living there. Around that same time, Michael contacted me, that Michael contacted me, Mary Holmes had reached out to Leanne about the director mu music position here at St. John's. Leanne teaches K through 12th grade at the academy, which you can imagine is more than a full-time job. So instead of, instead of applying, she recommended me. Also around the same time, Rebecca Britton, who was heading the search committee, met with Michael and he had mentioned that I was interviewing at MU. The typical formalities were met. I submitted a resume and such. 
and scheduled my interview at St. John's the day before I was to interview at MU. In fact, that week I had five separate interviews within five days of each other, uh, two of them in Asheville. But then something unexpected happened, at least unexpected for me. Shortly before I was to travel up, Rebecca contacted me to check in, making sure there were no issues. Everything was fine, and I mentioned the hotel I had booked during my stay in Fayetteville. It was a very cheap room. Rebecca did not, did not like this answer. I'm guessing she was familiar with the hotel and, in, and insisted she would put me up in a nicer one, and it was a much, much nicer one. This may not seem like a big deal, but it was something I had not experienced before. Rebecca's actions made it clear that this church cared seriously about this position and the person who would eventually assume it. It didn't stop there. Part of my interview was a luncheon with members of the vestry and music program. I wish I could say I remember who all was present, but that week was such a whirlwind. What I can say is that I remember seeing and feeling how much everyone there cared about the music program at St. John's. The sense of community and togetherness could not be hidden. That was something very special. To be frank, the interview at MU may have been the reason I found St. John's, but St. John's is the reason I chose to move here. Again, the kindness given to me didn't stop there. Literally the day after I accepted the position, I received a phone call from Ken Lancaster, who was on the vestry. He offered his services to help me find a place to live. It took a few weeks of looking around, but eventually he found this absolutely charming cottage house in Haymount, where I still live. And in case I've not already said it, Ken, thank you very much. I love it. Um, yet again, the kindness did not stop there. The day after I moved into my new house, I was visited by three members of St. John's, bringing a welcoming gift of water bottles, local goods, and a pineapple, which I learned that day is a Southern tradition. Shortly after that, Sue Vick hosted a get-together where I was able to meet members of our chancel choir and handbell choir. Everyone's excitement about the music program was palpable. My first official Sunday at St. John's, there was a reception held with a really nice cake topped with an organ bench, which now sits at my desk at home. It really, I cannot emphasize how much that actually like touched me. I, I've never received anything like that before. Then we hit the ground running. Two months later, Hurricane Michael struck, and in the aftermath, we hosted a benefit concert for our community. While I did a lot to coordinate the event, in truth, it was Rebecca who made it possible, contacting the organizations and then um, introducing me to them. Looking back, I'm so impressed with how many organizations came together to put the concert on and how hard our choir worked to learn the music. Since then, I've come to know the members of St. John's very, very well, celebrated in their triumphs and mourned their losses. St. John's isn't just a church to me, it's a home and a family. The kindness and compassion I've received here is unparalleled. At the beginning of the pandemic, the idea for the hymn sing came from this. It was obvious that we wouldn't be able to meet as, a, as we normally do for some time. And I was looking for ways to retain a semblance of community, and I think it, it has done that. Just a couple weeks ago, I was referred to as a morale officer because of it. Truth is, the hymn sings have been just as important to me, keeping me connected to you. Much to my surprise, the hymn sings are also attended by others not at St. John's, friends of yours and mine around the country. I distinctly remember one person watching from San Diego, California. It's an un unintended but very welcome outcome. As we look forward, the path is still unclear. In order to continue to make music possible, we have to think of new ways and push our boundaries. That being said, I'm certain that we will make it out to the other side, not because of me or some ingenious approach, but because we look out for one another. I would like to end with my favorite verse, as I think it ref reflects this parish succinctly. Seeing how you've treated me since I've arrived, and more, more so how you look out for one another, is the true embodiment of this text. John 15, 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that he may lay down his life for his friends. Thank you for welcoming me to St. John's, and thank you for listening.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Ryan, and we will thank you again a little bit later in the service. I note that the scripture passage you chose was, is also the one we use for the veteran service as well. And listen for themes of the way that we are called to lay down our lives in the service of others as we go through this service of baptism. I ask for the candidate for holy baptism to now be presented by parents and godparents. And just stay where you are, stand, yeah. Uh, I'll call you up a little bit later in the service, but for now, just everything will be, take place from the seat, so, okay. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. And, Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan, Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Savior? Will the congregation now please be prepared to answer boldly, we will, to the following question. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person and her life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? believe in God the Holy Spirit. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship at the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God's help. will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her faith in the communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into, into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who, who lives and reigns now and forever.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Kyle, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hold on, hold on just a second. Mary Kyle, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ on forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know you and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in your creation. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess that they Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us his eternal priesthood. Amen. Mary Kyle, you will receive this after church, but receive this light, bearing witness that the light of Christ shines in you and through you to the world. In a socially distanced matter, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let me say another word, word of welcome and also offer a few, a few announcements. First, your vestry and I have worked diligently to figure out what Christmas will look like at St. John's this year. If you have not already received a copy of the epistle, you should receive it soon. It has Christmas worship at St. John's on the front of it. And 
We will, for instance, we will not do the root screen. We will have poinsettias. We will have a 4 and 10 p.m. service, but we will not have a nativity pageant. The choir will be present, or, or the handbook choir might play, but we still would not be able to sing as a congregation or as, um, as a choir. So those are some of the decisions we had to make, but we feel by communicating it now, you will know better how to plan for the year. And please continue to keep your vestry in, in your prayers as we help navigate through these times. We will have poinsettias, therefore there is a sign-up sheet for poinsettias both in the newsletter and outside in the hallway. We will offer the opportunity to do Advent wreaths as a family. However, this year we provide the kits in the parish hall and instructions, and you will need to do the greening together. Hopefully, do the greening together at home. Hopefully next year, some of the times and ways that we can gather in person will be restored. This year, we are providing gifts for the Episcopal Farm Workers Ministry. Denise Varela um, has her phone number here in church. Denise, would you stand up and wave at everybody just so we'll, uh, she's up, up in the balcony now, but, but um, Denise has offered to take these gifts to Newton Grove. What she needs you to do is take to heart that call of the beginning of Advent to be diligent, to watch, to prepare, to respond between now and December 1st. That is between now and next Sunday, if you look at Sundays, please get the gifts to Hauser Hall and place them on the table. And that way Denise can take them in time. Anything else, Denise, you want to say? Thank you. So this is our way to respond um, this year. And, and we will have a vestry election in person on the first Sunday in December. It'll be a little bit different based on some guidelines, but um, John, do, we don't need to elaborate on that today, do we, other than to say it will happen. Okay. Now, um, I would like to ask Betsy Shepard to come to the microphone so that people both here and afar can hear and we are figuring out ways to worship virtually and to um, and to continue to work as a worshiping community and betsy has an invitation and explanation i believe so. good morning everybody good morning. Um, so for those of you who don't know me my name is betsy shepherd i'm a member of the eyc here at st john's and i'm also a member of the east carolina youth council which is a youth group that gets to plan and organize all of the youth events and activities going on throughout the entire diocese. So recently, because of my involvement with that council, I have become a member of this statewide committee that is a couple youth from the Diocese of East Carolina, a couple from the Diocese of North Carolina, and a couple from the Diocese of Western North Carolina that have all come together to prepare this Advent offering for the youth of the state. And so what we have for y'all is an evening prayer style worship service to be live streamed on Tuesday, December 13th. It'll be at 7 p.m. And Father Robert has so graciously allowed me to utilize Hauser Hall to have sort of like a, a viewing of that service. And it would just be really great if we could, I mean, metaphorically speaking, like pack Hauser Hall full of people to watch this service because the other youth and I have really poured our hearts into it. It is really in theory like by youth for youth. So we have a lot of exciting things planned for the youth. I can't reveal all, but you will see some of our North Carolina bishops rapping. So if that's an incentive for anybody to come. <laughs> is this rapping Christmas presents? Or, uh... oh, okay. <laughs> just just checking. So. Yeah, so if you'd like to potentially see Bishop Skirving trying to beatbox, you should come and enjoy that with us. Um, I'm going to try to get out like a Google form or something for RCPing in this week's Tuesday headlines because we do have a one-third capacity limit 
because of the COVID guidelines that the bishop has laid out, but it would really mean a lot to me and all of the youth that are planning this if people could come. So youth of the church, bring your friends, bring your family, bring your older siblings, because I know they're coming home for Christmas. Um, and yeah, thank you for listening. But I would love for everybody to attend that service. Betsy, thank you for your leadership and your enthusiasm. And we all share your desire to pack Hauser Hall in community. And thank you for clarifying that packing Hauser Hall means no more than 30% capacity and clarifying that if you're able to come in person, there will be a sign up sheet probably on Tuesday or to the Tuesday headline list. The other thing is just as worship today with live streaming, coming and participating does not have to mean in person. We've all figured out how to stay connected virtually. I'm, yeah, I'm so over 2020, I'm so over Zoom sometimes as well. But, um, but there, I hope there will be a link for those who wish to participate virtually. And, um, and as today, we're all in one another's prayers, whether we're here in person or not. Um, thank you for your leadership and enthusiasm. Um, are there other announcements before I turn the floor over to Mary Flagg? Uh, I know Mary Flagg will want to thank Ryan, and let's go ahead and give him a round of applause for, his, for the work that he does and for his witness to us this morning. Good morning. Thank you, Robert. And such a huge thank you to Ryan for sharing your story with us. Your work with music has been such a very powerful ministry for us at St. John's. And as I said this morning at 8 o'clock, the Lord brought Ryan to us for a reason. And we cannot thank you enough for all that you have done because as Robert has pointed out several times, most people are not even aware of what, what Ryan is doing. But thank you once again. Um, if you look in your um, seat, and I'd like to say a welcome to all those that are um, joining us virtually too and you'll receive these items in the mail. You'll see a prayer for stewardship, and also the pledge card, the envelope. And I would like to thank everyone that's here today, and those that are not here. Like I said, we will mail the pledge card to you, and once you get it in the mail, if you would just return it as soon as possible, and I know some of you here, we'd love for you to put it in the font as you leave. We're gonna remove the water, though. But if you feel like you want to go home, think about it, pray about, about it for a little bit, that's fine. You can just return it in the self-stamped envelope. And once again, thank you so much for what you've done for St. John's and allowing us to continue in our tradition for so many years. It's been wonderful this year, as John has reported, that everyone has been so wonderful about supporting us financially, and as Robert said earlier, in time and talent also. We're just such a wonderful church, and thank you once again. Mary Flagg, thank you for your leadership this year uh, in, in, um, as, we, as you help guide us in being faithful stewards in the kingdom of heaven and in this corner of Christ's ministry. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
Blessed art thou, O Lord God, King of the universe. Through your gracious goodness, we have this bread and wine which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, join in our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming to glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Amen. Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. And for us, keep the The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray a prayer for communion with Christ. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, 
where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. We desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you, and you in us, in this life and the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members Send us now into the world of peace, and strength and courage will not insert with gladness and sinless of heart to Christ our Lord. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Before the dismissal, let us join in a prayer for stewardship. O oh God, our loving creator and giver of all good gifts, bless our parish 
strengthen our faith, and grant us the spirit of Christian stewardship so that we may give generously of our time, talent, and treasure to spread your kingdom here in our church and throughout the world. For this we pray to the Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.